Now in studio uh, by uh, Honorable Maureen Hinda, Deputy Minister uh, in the Cabinet of the Republic, just to reflect, of course, on uh, what this period means, what is the behavior uh, that we need to uh, maintain as Namibians and what is expected for us uh, during the next three days of mourning, and particularly after the funeral, what should our demeanor be going forward as well? A very good morning to you, and thank you so much for making time out to uh, join me in studio, Honorable. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Mm. If we just uh, you know, reflect first and foremost before we get in, in, into the morning period, let's just reflect a little bit on, 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 on the leadership style of, 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 of the late president and what you had learned uh, from him. You know, um, my president, uh, our, our, late, our late president, I got to know him obviously uh, on a distance over the years before and after independence. And um, I must say, the person you know, you see on a distance, and the person you know on a closer range, uh, could be two different people. Um, so uh, he has gone through different types of leadership. Mm. I, I know, obviously, that I, there was a time that, uh, yeah, he, he went through different stages, and I think um, outstanding. What 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 it has taught us is that. Leadership is about adjustment. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about change. If, if the way you do things is not necessarily having the desired outcome, you need mm -hmm. to adjust. And I think I don't want to dwell on that, but that for me it was Hake. Mm -hmm. He has adjusted. He has made changes to his lifestyle mm -hmm. in the way he does things to adjust to the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and I think... Um, Personally, I, I have gone through that and I have taken a lot of lessons from him as a Pan-Africanist, as a, a SOPO member, as a, a political leader, and as, as a public mm -hmm. figure as well, um, as much as I learned in my youth days mm -hmm. on, when they arrived and landed in Namibia when we were running all over to see them when we were just young, admiring them on a distance. So, yes, um, he has a leadership style that has offered uh, mm. basically a school in itself, if you look at it. If, if one looks at this, of course, we are basically in the third week of mourning now. Uh, it feels like literally it happened yesterday. But one of the things I know is that as, 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 as leaders, as political office bearers, as, as government leaders, you didn't really have a chance to sit back and reflect on the loss because there's so much work to do immediately after that. The transition happened and you had to plan the funeral and so forth. Just reflect a little bit on, on, on the mood within, within, within the camp, with, with the team, you know, within the executive, uh, the cabinet, and the, the, the political leadership of the country. Because I, I think it is very difficult to, to analyze that, because everybody moans differently. Mm -hmm. Some people moan even by working hard, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just putting up a face. Uh, but generally, I think as a nation, we had time to reflect. Mm -hmm. That I think we had, because so many to people talk about hockey from their own perspective or from different perspectives, but you could see the synergy within those analysis and experiences that were, were, were related. I think it gives us, uh, as Namibians, time, and I must appreciate the extended morning time of three weeks. I think it has given us time to reflect on he who was, but also what leadership means to a country, what visionary leadership is offered, and how we as um, the next layer of leaders needs to respond to visions portrayed or uh, expressed by uh, the president or a president. Uh, Comrade Hake, uh, especially when I listen to what everybody has to say, um, I get tempted to, to compare him to Julius Nerere. Because, you know, when Nerere came up with the philosophy of Uyama, um, it, he was not understood. There was so much critics of it. But Tanzania today still reaps the fruits of the leadership of that, or the vision of Nerere. And the, those that came after him built on that. 
And I think that is what I take from uh, Dr. Hage Genko. Mm. When he was in office, credits were so, um, critics were so, so high. Mm. And we spent little time wanting to understand where does he want to take the nation. And during this morning, the assessment, reflections, even from the ordinary men on the street to the top leadership, to our fourth president and our vice president, our prime minister, deputy prime minister, the whole of cabinet, whole of parliament, whole of the opposition leadership. I think as a country, we had an opportunity to reflect. What it tells us is that now we understand what was Hage's vision, where, what was his whole intention, because now people could think about it. I think we take little time to think about yesterday. So we had an opportunity to think about it. We have comprehended. We have an understanding of what um, Namibian House is all about, what Harembe is all about, and his four pillars mm -hmm. of, of, of his prosperity plan. And I think we can only uh, take the nation forward with what we have gained thus far. In terms of the morning, of course, we know the morning period uh, is running as we speak. We've entered the crucial last uh, three days uh, before before the burial. We'll have the proceeding um, start at 12 o'clock today. What should be the posture that we take as a nation, as, as a people during these uh, three days? I think, first of all, it is our first experience. We're all learning as we go. Um, I always believe in public diplomacy. Mm. And I think it's an opportunity for every Namibian to showcase what Namibians are made up of. We would have 18 heads of states with each a delegation close to 30, 50. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of guests around. Uh, let's be courteous. Let's be accommodative. Let's put our difference, if we still have some left, aside. And let's... Um, portray the Namibia we want to the outside world. Well, one of the very interesting things that I'd also observed over the last three weeks was, I think, obviously, since even the first day that, that, mm. that we heard the news, uh, there wasn't any concern of political unrest, civil unrest, any concern of coup, whatever, anything from, from Namibians in general. And up until today, with its barber shops, etc., Everybody has the same posture around that. They said, no, we're not concerned. We know, of course, the processes will take place and things will move forward. I mean, what does that tell us about the legacy that, 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 that he's leaving behind? Because he was always a president that said, peace comes before everything else. If there's no peace, we can't do anything else after that. Yeah, I think it is about the Namibian history. Mm. First of all, uh, we have a democracy that has matured. Mm. We have had... Uh, peaceful transitions since the day of independence. So not so much new. What is different is that we had time to reflect mm -hmm. about leadership issues mm -hmm. um, of what, how do we move forward? I think that's crucial. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't take peace for granted. Mm -hmm. What actually means is that now that we seem, all seem to understand what the vision was and what the Namibian house actually looks mm -hmm. like, Expectations would be higher. Definitely. Leadership needs to move to the next level so that we meet that expectations. Because now everybody really would want to see an inclusive house. Everybody would want to see common interests being prioritized. Everybody would want to see ethical leadership from everybody that thinks that he wants, to, first of all, every citizen. But then those in leadership, pressure would be more. Mm. So when you in a leadership position, be it corporate, be it in, in public office, we need to take that into account, that Namibians actually is watching with an equal eye. They're more aware of where we're supposed to be or where we wanted to go. So I think we have more pressure to do introspect. Mm. In, our leadership styles and see how we would adjust. That's why I exactly said at the beginning that Gumbenda mm. Hake was somebody who have adjusted this leadership style over the period. So I think each and every leader should then adjust and embrace 
the one Namibian housing. There shouldn't be more stories about jobs for comrades, you know, um, people being getting all the tenders to one person, uh, positions being reserved for certain groups of people, all that evils, you know, one person wanting to have everything in one basket, that should all be of past. We must all think about the collective, of what is the best interest of the company, country, even this thing of privatization, wanting to cut up, destroy Midco, making things private. The private also needs to understand that we need to survive as a collective for Namibia to move forward. It wouldn't help that you ensure that you become, you accumulate the wealth and government becomes a security guard. That will take us backwards. Uh, and so, so, so what you're saying basically is the unity. Unity is, 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 should be the anchor uh, going forward. We know, we know that mm -hmm. the, the president, of course, also had a, a, quite a serious affinity for young people and the youth as well. Mm -hmm. I know you've played a lot of roles there, even leading up to uh, the position that you have where you had to work with a lot of young people. What is your message to, 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 to the youth of Namibia at a time where they have really lost not only their president but a, a, a father figure that was accessible to all? You know, um, one thing that we also shouldn't lose uh, uh, um, sight, of. sight of mm -hmm. is that we in Namibia operate on collective leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything could not die of Hake. Mm -hmm. This is a collective leadership style, of course, directed by the vision of the person that is in the driving seat. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, and, and as a ruling party, the party has always believed in continuity. But the continuity of the good, mm -hmm. right? continuously improving for the better. And I think um, the youth can only expect that it will become better. What my, uh, exp my, my message would be to the youth is also to prepare for the better. That I think we have gone into a stage whereby we just demand. But I think we must look at what can we as young people bring to the table for our country. And one of it is education, education, education. Let's prepare ourselves. And that includes vocational education or any skills training or any research. We have to look into... Uh, go into a stage where we would have to look at economic development, mm -hmm. where we'll have to look at do valuation assessments and valuations. But the reality is that we need to do a bit of more research mm -hmm. to understand what is it that we need, how can we move forward, how can we secure market access. Because people can produce, people can put up factories, but if there's no market access, and more specifically, diplomatic engagements. I think we, be it in the country, in the region, on the continent, needs to understand the same principle that we have to push forward. Whatever we do must, must take us to the next level as a collective and as not collective. as individual. So we, the youth has to let go of the individualistic approach. The youth has to talk as a collective for the youth on the bottom and the one in the front line. At the moment, because when we only demand leadership sit on the main table, we're only talking about the front line because mm -hmm. only so many people can sit on the on, 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 the, the, on the front table, yeah. Yes, but what is it that the youth is looking at as to advance the youth as a collective? Mm -hmm. And I think it can has to start with education. It has to start with access to 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 facilities, it has to start with employment opportunities, but also understanding that what are the market needs? What is it that will make me employable? So, the, so that we can innovate as young people to exactly. be able to be soaked up in the market. You young, uh, as, as, mm. as, we, as we're closing off this conversation, just your, mm. final, uh, your, your final remarks, your final words for the, for the Namibian nation. I want to greet Namibia with uh, Psalm 30 mm. that talks about the UA <laughs> comes in the morning. I think um, let's go with respect uh, to um, finalize um, the mourning period and to put our president to, to rest. But the joy comes in the morning. 
Let's look forward to a better tomorrow. Let's work as a team and let's implement the expectations that have been placed there and uh, the standards have, that has been put. Let's be of support to the leadership and let the leadership offer uh, the, what will take us forward and not backward. Thank you very much, Your Honourable, for making time to join us this morning. Thanks for having me. And I'm Maureen Hinderbuende. Well, there we have it. That's, of course, uh, the Deputy Minister, Honourable Maureen Hinderbuende, just reflecting a little bit and talking to us generally just about you know, the, the healing process, the next three days uh, that we are going through together as a nation and what we need to be reminded and hopeful for. Uh, for the future in as far as continuing the legacy of the late president is concerned.